Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode. My name is Sergio Gabor and I'm a quality engineer in the automotive industry. Today we'll clean some air and we'll test 5 cabin air filters to see which is the best at filtering out dust and smells. Cabin air filters are essential in offering a better driving experience as they are responsible for cleaning all the air used by the ventilation system. For this episode I've selected the best of the best, the top of the line or the premium products from 5 different manufacturers that will be competing for the title of best cabin air filter. In order to establish this I've came across with a series of tests that will push their capabilities to the max and will help us in determining which is number one. We'll first start with an overview of the filters, taking a very close look at how each one is made, after which we'll continue with 5 filtration tests for dust, smoke, smell and exhaust gases. Following this, I'll put my nose on the line to see if these products can filter out the smells of a rotten egg. And towards the end of the video, we'll take a look at the results and form our opinion regarding each product. That's quite a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Most manufacturers offer two types of filter, the basic one and the activated carbon filter. But some of them offer a third type, known as a premium biofunctional filter, which besides filtering out particulate matter and odors, it's also effective against bacteria and other microorganisms due to a special layer. In a previous episode, I've tested the difference between these filters and according to those results, the premium filters offer the best particle separation. Other than that, the odor absorption capability is similar to the advanced filter. In my opinion, choosing the best cabin air filter is much more important than choosing many other products for your car because these filters protect you and you are more important than your car. You drive your car where other cars are being driven and cars produce a lot of pollutants which are very harmful like dust created by brakes and tires, soot and other exhaust particles. All this is besides the environmental hazards like fungal spores or bacteria. To put it simply, roads are very polluted and you're driving right through it. So using top quality filters protects what's most important, you and your health. Think about it like this, you can always get a new car, but it's far more difficult to get new lungs. <laughs> that being said, let's take a look at the products that we'll test and we'll start with Connect, which is part of Male. This is the Carematics filter with a so-called S5 broadband technology. This refers to the 5 layers of protection offered by this filter and not the 5G connectivity that you get with the vaccine. <laughs> It weighs in at 258 grams and it costs 17 euros, which is 30% more than the advanced activated carbon version from the same manufacturer. The price of these products can vary quite a lot depending on many aspects, therefore I won't pay too much attention to it and I'll report what I'd paid for each one. Now, taking a look at the Male filter, we can see that it's quite flexible and it has the smallest surface area. However, placing it over a bright light source, we can see that very little light can pass through, meaning that the filtering media is thick. Using high magnification, we can clearly see the fiber structure of this filter with activated carbon embedded beneath. Examining the filter, we can see that it has three fiber layers. One layer of activated carbon and another one made out of small brown balls. <laughs> I'm not exactly what these are, but do let me know in the comments if you do. My best guess is that these are sprinkles used for decorating cakes. <laughs> so I believe that these are the five layers that Male is talking about. Next is the filter from Hengst, which is called Blue Care. Because it's blue? Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> According to Hanks, this also has a 5 layer structure, it weighs 248 grams and it has one of the best qualities I've ever seen in a cabin air filter. The cost of this product is 15 euros. It has a foam gasket for better sealing which helps with particle separation but can also make this product harder to install. Shining a light through it, we can see that it's a bit more translucent than Male and it has the largest surface area. This means that the filter media is thinner, so more material can fit in the same space. Under high magnification, we can see the blue fibers, which are part of the antimicrobial layer, with zinc pyrito... Py, pyri, py, oh hell. Pyrithione. Beneath this, we can see the carbon layer, which is less dense than on the previous filter. Taking a look at the structure, I'm not able to distinguish the five layers advertised by Hengst, and I can only see three, the antimicrobial blue layer, the carbon layer, and another fiber layer. Moving on to the filter from Bosch, called Filter Plus. According to Bosch, this has four layers, and it weighs 182 grams, so it's a bit lighter than the previous, and it costs 17 euros. Shining a light through it, we can see that this is even more translucent than the previous ones. It has a medium-sized surface area, smaller than Hengst and larger than Male, but similar to Valeo and Man. 
Under high magnification, we can see that Bosch lets a lot of light to pass through, and the carbon particles are more scattered than on the previous products. Peeling off the layers, I can only distinguish three, and I'm not exactly sure which is the fourth mentioned by Bosch. The filter from Valeo is called Protect Max, although, if I'm not mistaken, Valeo changed this name to Clean Filter Supreme. In any case, according to their website, it seems like this product is also based on a four layer structure. But right from the start, there's a problem. It costs 32 euros, which is doubled compared to the rest. Moreover, the quality is mediocre and it weighs 160 gram, which makes it the lightest in this test. Usually, from my observations, Valeo products are priced lower than Male and Man, but this filter seems to be the exception. If we shine a light through it, we can see that it's just as translucent as Bosch, and under high magnification, it has a pretty similar carbon density as well. The similarities between these two don't stop there, because just as with the Bosch, the fourth layer is nowhere to be seen from my point of view. Now, the last is Man Freshers Plus, but we're not going to test it again because we already did that in a previous episode, so we got the results. But just to have a short presentation for these two, this is the Man Freshers Plus. It's advertised as having just a three layer structure with a weight of 270 grams, meaning that this is the heaviest filter from this comparison. The cost for this is 18 euros and it has a medium sized surface area similar to Bosch and Valeo. But unlike these two, if we shine a light through the MAN filter, we can see that it's less translucent, similar to Male in this regard. Under high magnification, we can see that the filter media is very dense, and again similar to Male. Additional investigation reveals that this filter indeed has a three layer structure with a dense carbon layer. Looking at all these filters, we can see some similarities. They are all rated for PM 2.5 microns or lower, meaning that they can separate out fine particles. They all have an antibacterial layer and they all have a service interval of 15,000 kilometers. Moreover, besides the Bosch filter, they all seem to offer the key to a happy marriage. So guys, if you're still single, don't use the Bosch, get one of the others and you'll soon have a wife, kids, a dog and three mortgages. Just kidding. Besides the similarities, there are some differences as well. For example, Valeo claims to have a filtration rating of 0.5 microns, which is a bit optimistic. <laughs> if we compare the high magnification photos side by side, I cannot say that Valeo is much denser than the others, but we'll see how it performs during the test. Another difference between these products is the layer distribution. You can see that each filter has a different color on one side. This is the antibacterial layer and we can distinguish between manufacturers according to this color. However, you can see here that the filters are positioned so that the airflow passes through them from back to front or better said, from the back towards the camera. For Man, Hengst and Male, the antibacterial layer is the last protection layer. So I believe that the bacteria could still grow inside the filter. On the other hand, for Valeo and Bosch, the first protection layer is antibacterial layer. I'm not sure if this is correct, but logic would suggest that with Valeo and Bosch, any microorganisms that would come into contact with this filter would get stopped by this layer. Therefore, it would not have the chance to grow inside the filter. Let me know what you think in the comments below. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing as this helps me a lot. Now, let's start the tests to see how these products perform. I won't go into too much details about the testing procedure, just a brief overview, but I'll post details in the description if you need them. Basically, we'll test out five parameters, which in my opinion are the most important. A dust test, a smoke test, a volatile organic compound test or VOC for short, better known as a smell test, a gas exhaust test and a diesel exhaust test. For each filter I'll perform the same test three times and the value recorded will be the average between these three tests. In other words, for each filter, each test will be done three times. <laughs> this ensures that the results are more reliable. The instruments used for these tests are a particle counter and an air quality meter. In the previous episode where I tested the MAN products, I reported all the data recorded and the results were a bit overwhelming. Therefore today we'll just focus on PM1, PM2.5 and PM10 and TVOC which can be considered the smell detector. <laughs> Let's start the test after which I'll let you know how they performed and we'll compare the results. But while the test is running, please allow me to present today's sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with some of the best educational content available. 
Skillshare has thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including web development, marketing, videography and much more. In my opinion, online learning is the best way to start working on a new skill or just polish one that you already acquired. In my pursuit to have better quality content here on YouTube, I've came across software tools that looked very overwhelming. But with the guidance offered by classes on Skillshare, mastering software tools becomes very easy. But that's not all they offer and in fact you'll probably find anything that you're interested in learning here on Skillshare. All content is carefully crafted with learning in mind, so there are no ads and new classes are added frequently so you can stay focused and enjoy new perspectives on the things that you want to learn. The first 1000 people that click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership and after that, with an annual subscription, everything is available with less than $10 a month, which is a very great deal. Many thanks to Skillshare for making learning fun and for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our tests and see how the filters performed. In my previous episode when I tested the MAN products, I also performed a control test without a filter to have something to compare against. So here we have the control values recorded for each test. Here you can see the particle dimensions and below the actual values recorded. These represent the number of particles detected during each test. On the top row I've included the normal values recorded in my garage when I'm not working so no dust is being created. For example now while I'm recording this, these are the normal values of particulate matter and volatile organic compounds around me, if I'm not guessing. During the VOC and the gas exhaust test, the particle reading did not pass normal values and also the air quality meter did not record the normal values in the dust test. Therefore, you can see normal indicated here. In the dust test, I've used 5 grams of cement and I chose this because the particle dimension ranges between 7 and 200 microns. During this test, we can see that Male and Knecht had the best results followed by Mann, Bosch and Valeo in that order. Beside each value, you can see a percentage which represents the reduction in the number of particles compared to the base control value I showed earlier. For example, without a filter, during the dust test, I've recorded 38,022 particles bigger than 1 micron. But using the Male filter, the same number of particles dropped to 25,692, which is a 32.43% decrease. Feel free to pause the video if you would like to further compare these results. A graph showing the difference is also very useful and you can clearly see their particle separation performance. On the vertical axis we have the number of particles and on the horizontal axis we have the particle dimension. The grey line represents the control measurement without any filter, so you can clearly see that even the worst performing product is still much better than nothing. Now let's continue with the smoke test for which I used the light bulb to burn some paper and create some smoke. The smoke was captured in the top box and a fan pulled it through the filter in the bottom box where the measuring equipment is. As with the previous test we can see a reduction in the number of particles with the same trend. Male having the best result followed by Hengst, Mann, Bosch and Valeo. But in this test, besides the particles, we also have a reading for the VOCs. And we can see that Male again has a good result almost on par with Hengst. Next is the VOC test which stands for volatile organic compounds. Here I measured how much VOCs can these filters absorb by placing 4 drops of acetone on the cotton pad. In this test a lower value is a better result and Male again had the best result followed by Mann, Hengst, Bosch and Valeo. So far Valeo seems to have a pretty bad time coming last in every test, but we'll discuss more about this after finishing the tests. Next is the gas exhaust test where I used my motorcycle to produce some exhaust gases. In this case my measuring devices didn't detect an increase in particulate matter. Unlike the previous test, this time we have Mann in the number 1 spot followed by Male, Hengst, Bosch and Valeo. And finally the diesel exhaust test where I used the diesel car to produce some nasty exhaust gases. Regarding the particulate matter, Male and Hengst had the best result followed by Mann, Bosch and Valeo. But regarding the TVOC, the filter from Mann recorded the best result followed by Male, Hengst, Bosch and Valeo. Now that the analytical tests are performed, I would like to put my nose on the line and see for myself which filter has the best odor absorbing capability. We have the results from the air quality meter, but it will be easier for me to rate these products if I can feel for myself how they do. So to test this I have a rotten egg in a jar sitting in my garage for a few months. Uh, in any case, it smells horrible and if these filters can reduce the smell just by half, it's a great result. Let's start with Mann. 
And yeah, you can definitely still smell the stench, but it's nowhere near the actual smell of this egg. I'll give a rating to each filter from these tests, from 1 to 5. 1 meaning that it doesn't absorb any odor and 5 meaning that I couldn't smell anything. So for man I would give the same 3.5 score as last time. Now let's see how the rest do. Male is very similar to man, absorbing most of the odor and I would give this the same score of 3.5. Hengst is still good, but I feel like the smell has a bit more punch, therefore I would give this a score of 3. Now the last two, which I'm most afraid of. Fortunately Bosch seems to hold it together pretty well, and it's not much worse than Hengst. I would give Bosch a score of 2.5. Now Valeo, and I'm not sure what's wrong with this filter, but the smell will haunt me forever. <laughs> 1.5 for Valeo. Now that my life is shorter by a few months, we can form a better opinion about these products and which is the best. I haven't tested the antimicrobial layer because microbiology is not my cup of tea and I was unable to find anyone who can help me with the necessary lab equipment to test this. But if I find someone, I'll gladly make a follow-up episode testing this aspect. Nevertheless, we'll talk about some studies in a few moments after the product rating. Let's start with Valeo as this had the worst results. Now it's quite unfortunate that this filter performed so poorly as it's quite expensive and if you buy it with the premises that more money equals better products, you'll be very disappointed. But as I said earlier, price is relative so I won't focus on it too much. From what I can tell in my country Valeo is not considered a premium brand with most products costing less than the competition. But in this case this filter is very expensive and for that money you get a relatively low quality product. I'm not sure if you noticed but I had to use alligator clips to keep this filter in place during testing as it doesn't fit properly. If you would have installed this filter in your car these gaps would make it mostly useless and no matter how much it costs it's still not worth it. Because of the poor results during testing and the low quality, my rating for this product is go home son, you're drunk. Bosch is next and just like Valeo, where I live, aftermarket products from Bosch are not considered to be premium quality. Some are, but some don't. However, this filter had pretty good results, although it's quite mediocre compared with the rest. If you can find it for less money than Man, Male or Hengst, it's a solid choice, but because there are better alternatives out there, my rating for Bosch is acceptable if it's cheap. Man is a mixed bag. In some cases it had the best TVOC results, meaning that it's very good at filtering out bad odors, but in most cases it fell a little short compared to Male and Hengst. It only has three filtering layers and this is consistent with my observation and according to my measuring equipment it does a very good job at particle separation. For this reason my rating for MAN filter is almost excellent but not there yet. Second to last is Hengst and this is the first filter tested from this manufacturer. I was very impressed with the quality of this product and with its performance while testing. It has the largest surface area out of the products tested today and although MAN is a bit better at filtering out bad odors, the Hengst filter did a better job at separating out particulate matter and is mostly on par with the Male product in this regard. It has a foam gasket that helps with sealing, but as mentioned, in some cases I believe that it would cause problems with the fitment as the tolerances are quite small. Overall, my rating for this product is almost excellent, but not there yet. Although, because it's so well built, I'll give it an extra half star. Last is Male, or Knecht, as in this case, it seems like they're the same. This filter can do it all, and it does it very well. It has the smallest surface area, but this is because the filtering media is thicker than the others. It consistently had the best results in almost all tests, and is the only filter where all five layers were distinguishable. Also, in my case, the price was pretty much the same as the others, and only 30% more than the middle class filters known as the advanced activated carbon filters. Because of these results and because I don't have anything else better to compare it to, I'm awarding Male with the title of best cabin air filter and my rating is shut up and take my money. So there you have it, my opinion for these products. As I mentioned, I couldn't test the antibacterial properties for these filters because experiments involving microorganisms require special equipment which I don't have and I cannot afford. I know that this is a very important aspect of these products and I'll certainly do a follow-up video if I can sort things out. But until then, I did a little research online and I found two articles worth mentioning. In the first one, written by GarageWire, it's mentioned that Male already performed extensive 
extensive laboratory tests and the results were, and I quote, the general promises made by the manufacturers could not be fulfilled and the germs spread in the filter, overgrowing it with fungi. Interesting, but this article smells like fake. Clickbait to me. It doesn't provide a source of the news or research and I couldn't find any other articles regarding this topic. Furthermore, if Male discovered that the antibacterial filters are inefficient, why are they still making them? <laughs> In another publication made by a university in France, an experiment involving surgical masks made with a polyphenol layer had the promising results decreasing the number of bacteria in the mask. I don't know about you, but I would rather trust the results from a university than what GarageWire is reporting. <laughs> In any case, there are other filters on the market that could give Male a run for its money. And I'm referring to Perflux, which is another great filter manufacturer, but I was unable to find this product in stock anywhere. <laughs> but if this video gets a lot of likes, I'll do a follow-up, so hit that like button. This video was made possible due to Skillshare, who sponsored today's video, and the great generosity of my Patreon members. If you would like to help me with future episodes, please consider joining the Patreon community for as little as $1 a month. For this, you'll get early access to all my videos, including some private ones, and you'll also have the chance to win some of the products that I test. You can also follow me on social media, where I post updates and stuff I'm working on. Until next time, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye!